Legend of Total War here, and today we've got a Rate Your Doomstack submission, but this video is going to be more like a, um, how not to make your Doomstack video. So, this save file was sent in by somebody who was specifically setting out to make a Doomstack, and I'm going to explain here why it's, there's a lot of confusing things here that don't make any sense. So what we've got here is playing as Luther Harkon, we've got what's supposed to be a Doomstack, but it's kind of not. Uh, going up against Dark Elves, a lot of force here. Could just easily lightning strike it, but it's not a disaster battle, so we're not here to just win the battle. We're here to explain how to make this better, if this is what you want to do. One thing that I often encounter when we're doing these sort of videos is that some people will say things like, but what if I don't want to make a Doomstack? That's totally fine. If this is the army that you want to build, that is, that's totally cool with me. But if you're like, hey, here's my Doomstack, I'm trying to make it a Doomstack, I'm going to try to help you to ma actually make it better. So, um, it just depends on the context that the email is sent in. Like, when somebody sends in a disaster save file, right, they usually label it, hey, this is a disaster, save me, just do whatever you got to do, save me, right? And I usually try not to criticize their army too much because they're just playing however they want to play, and that's totally fine. Um, and it's, uh, you know, just a situation where I need to win. And they've either got a good army or a bad army or somewhere in between. And that's fine. I'll just do the best I can with what I've got. But if somebody's sending in a situation like this, which we could auto-resolve win this. This is not a d disaster. But this is somewhere where this guy is trying to do something and wants my input. And that's what we're trying to do here. I think it's really important to have that context. So this guy here plays on hard difficulty in this particular campaign. Which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and I think what he's trying to do here is try to make an army that's just got all bases covered. Now, the thing is, um, you have to kind of understand the critical nature of how battles in Warhammer 2 works. Everything that you do needs to be working towards inflicting the army losses, because that's... The army losses is, is where you win a battle, right? And you have to un understand the equation of the army losses. The army losses doesn't require you to do everything, right? You don't have to obliterate 99% of the um, enemy forces. You don't have to be good at killing every last one of their units. See, in Medieval 2, as an example, there was no army losses penalty, really. There was a small one, but it really, it was non-existent, right? So you had to cover all your bases. Your army had to be able to beat anything. If you went cavalry spam, which is usually the best way to go, um, and you went up against pikemen, crap! You could take out everything else in the enemy army, but you would still have to deal with those pikemen at some point, right? So you would you would usually have to bring something to deal with everything. So you want to cover all your bases. But in in from Empire Total War onwards, because of the army loss penalty, and it's not necessarily a bad thing because it it helps speed up that that last little bit of the end of the battle when you've basically won, but the last few units remain. Um, there's a penalty that's inflicted on the on what is deemed the loser, where the remaining units just lose, right? So, if you build an army that doesn't cover all of your bases, let's just say you build an army full of artillery, right? An artillery army is not going to be great against single entities. What are you going to do? Oh no, I need to put something in my army to deal with single entities. No. No. You only need to worry if the entire enemy army is full of single entities. What you need to do then is focus on killing everything else except for the single entities, inflict the army losses, and then just let them go away from there. That's usually the way to go. And so what he's done here is by trying to cover all of his bases, he's actually weakened his army, so it's actually more difficult to get the army losses. So in this particular situation here, he's got man-eaters with great weapons to try to act as meat shields so that these guys here can keep shooting. But the problem with that is that... Um, if we just had more Necrofexes, we could stagger them out so that they could act as meat shields. And the thing is, because the, the Necrofexes can get like 100 kills before the enemy get close, they've already done their worth before they even get into melee. Whereas these guys here can't do that. Uh, and I'm not sitting here saying that, oh, you should get the Ogre Pistols instead because they don't have anywhere near as much firepower as the Necrofex. Some factions will benefit from having a balanced army, such as the Dwarfs or the Empire, because they don't have, like, super powerful units that can just take on everything, right? Like, playing as the Dwarfs, it's not really a good idea to go organ gun spam because there's many situations that they just can't deal with. But the thing is, there are many factions in the game that have, like, one unit that is just, like, their go-to unit, and getting anything else almost doesn't even make sense. Now, the Vampire Coast is one of those factions where the Necrofex Colossus just covers 
all of their bases, right? Um, it, well, not all of their bases, but covers so many of their bases that the other stuff that it doesn't cover can just be ignored. So the Necrofex Colossus, because it's an artillery unit, um, just destroys infantry, absolutely destroys them. It's pretty good against monsters, not amazing, and you can also heal them. Also, when they get damaged, they spawn a unit of infantry that you can use to, to tank. So a really versatile unit. Also, because of the way the Vampire Coast function, the upkeep cost of any individual unit is not a factor. So, um, if you're thinking, oh yeah, but I need something a little bit cheaper, no, you don't need to do that with Vampire Coast. Their finances are not an issue. So, if you're trying to build a Doom stack, that's not really the way to go about it. So, what he's done here with the Mournfang Cavalry, specifically in the email, he said that um, he got these to run down enemy units. Now, the thing is, that's useful in some situations, right? Um, but because of the nature of Total War Warhammer 2, most units pretty much fight to the death most of the time. So once a unit has routed, chances are if they rally and come back into melee, they're gonna route again pretty much straight away because the majority of the morale penalty that any unit is inflicted on them is due to the damage that's already been done to them. There are a few exceptions, like using some spells and whatever, lots of debuffs, that can definitely factor into it. So running down a unit that is already 99% dead is of no value, right? Um, that's in, in this particular case here. I'm not saying that doing that in all cases is bad, but in this case here, we just it's its like something that we just don't need to do, right? Um, got a lot of heroes in here. I don't really like them being on Rotting Prometheans. Um, it's, I just personally hate them out. I think it's a really... It like just creates a lot of weaknesses on the unit. Like, they, um, they're big, so they get hit easier. They're not very fast, so they can't get out of combat very easily. Easily, and it, it just doesn't really make them a good fighter at all. So I just think personally, it's like one of the, it. Actually, I'd go so far as to say it is the worst mount in the game. Worse than a horse, worse than a cold one. It is just the worst mount in the game. So I'd put them on foot because if they get caught in melee on foot, they can actually slip right through enemy lines. But when you're caught on a big hunkin' piece of crab burger like this, you get stuck so easily. Also, another thing is that when they get attacked, if they're on foot, they can get knocked down. And getting knocked down can actually be a good thing, because when you're knocked down, you're, like, invulnerable to damage for a few seconds. Also, it, you could use the Necrofexes to blast enemy units around them, whereas in this unit, you're more likely to bloody hit them than the, than the other unit. So having large units as tanks can actually be quite bad. All right, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to fight the battle as best as possible, and we're going to see what the damage values are afterwards. I'm going to use this army to the best of my ability, so I need to keep this one back a little bit, because it's going to get obliterated by artillery. I do want to use them to run down enemy units, because that's their role. I'm not saying that any of these units are particularly bad. Ogres are great, but using them as replacement for doobstacks probably isn't going to work in this case here. So, let's move up. So we can start shooting before they get organized. So yeah, I, I can fully appreciate people want to experiment with like the Vampire Coast with various different Doom stacks. But the thing is, there's such a like unbalanced faction is really the only way to put it that the, you're not really going to get anything better than either a Dread Incarnate Hero spam or Necrofex Colossus spam. There's really no other, like, good choices for them. That's just what they've got. Okay, so I want to bring them up so they can cast down zombies to just really slow down enemy movements here. And pop that down on Marathi. Cool, so I want them more shooting. I actually don't really like the Gallows Giant that much because of its low range. I reckon these guys here... Sometimes it can be very good, but... This low range kind of pisses me off sometimes. Just range is just really, really valuable in this. Looks like they might want to cross over this way. I usually don't want to use the, the uh, like the death shriek, if we are um. getting shot. So just send them in to keep them busy while the uh, while these guys shoot. Okay. 
Okay, Mournfang Kev. Probably, uh, yeah, I don't know. Hang on. Why don't we get over here? I'll use another um, Vanguard's Revenge. Because, you know, that is a very good spell. May have missed a good opportunity. Oh, no, 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 hang on. This, this could work. Especially if Luther. Hang on. No, that, that'll do okay. The biggest problem with Vanguard's Revenge is that it takes a long time to cast. That's all. So, how'd that go? Yeah, that got about 100 kills. It's pretty good. Alright. Here comes an arcane conduit. Might even be better off just like. Just keep using the summons. Hold them back as long as possible. Let the Necrofexes keep doing their thing. They're just doing so much damage already. Alright, we're gonna have to start using these guys here. The fast units are coming in. They need to be prevented to arrive. Okay, Luther Harkon, it's very tanky, so we can send him in there to provide more delay. Oh shit, you need to get back. Okay, I want to get around the back of their army, get rid of the Reaper Bolt Throwers. the problem with them. Get stuck. See how they're taking damage really quickly? That's not ideal. I'm going to have to send an ogre to come and help. Luther's doing just fine on his own there. Uh, where did Marathi go? Because I can only put this on her. i got to find her friggin... There she is. I need to send ogres over there. Probably going to see these ogres get wiped out. Which is another reason why this um, Doomstack isn't really going to work. The, like, the irreplaceable nature of ogres. Yeah, it's like, it just it sucks so much when you lose them. And we can't heal them either. Okay, we got their artillery. Cool. Alright. Where is... Might be a good idea to also shoot the Hydra. Okay, this guy... Okay, we got some Arcane Conduits ready to go again. Cool. Let's get ready to use... Let's use this. It's a bit of an expensive spell, but... They're... Tanky-ish. Tankier than zombies, at least. Okay, these guys here are too much in the thick of it there. Can try to get them out a little bit. Really just wish I had more firepower here. Mm, not yet, just hold off on that for the time being. Find a little bit more time with that. Our Necrofexes are doing just fine. How are the Mordfangs? Like, they've done a good amount of damage. Really important damage as well. But it's going to be very difficult to get them out of here because the the uh, Dark Elves are just a very fast race. Can't outrun them. Okay, we're running low on ammo, so i got to start doing a bit of this. Yeah, definitely the Mournfang Cavalry were better than the Man-Eaters, for sure, without a doubt. And we'll do what their intended purpose is, run down, like I said, broken units with 99% damage. Which we don't really need to focus on. 
Okay, I really should have been on top of this a bit more. Because I've run out of ammo a bit faster than I had originally hoped. How's Luther doing? He's, he's still tanking. Okay, where'd Marathi go? I don't know where she is. Can't see her. bit stuck there and the and rampage you get back in there you're finished anyway all right double arcane conduits and let's chuck down one of these here since they got a line coming at us you'll still hold that a little bit longer there's marathi since she was behind me all right we got a few guys here not doing anything we should send them in to go into melee since it's I don't have anything else for them to do. Okay, we're taking too much damage with Luther now. He can regenerate, but I gotta get him out of there. He's done a good job tanking, loads of kills. Maybe I'll pop down one of these. Bouncer power's in our favor, so that's a good sign. Okay, you you've taken oh you've taken way too much damage. Get back, get back. These two here. Let's move them back. Move them down to here, which seems to be the safe spot. Okay, I think what we need here is a Vanguard's Revenge right in here, but I need to recover a bit more wins. Get Luther over here, maybe. Cancel that. Mostly cleared. Still more reinforcements coming in. All of the ogres are gone now. Luth is having a bit too much trouble. I need to use somebody to delay these guys. They're just doing too much damage to us. Nope, it's not working. Alright, we're gonna have to use Vanguard's Revenge after all. I'll just cast it all the way down the line here and just. I don't even know if I'm gonna hit anything with that. Since this is a slaughter. I'd much rather dish out damage than using a hex. Because once these guys here are in melee, they're not particularly. Uh, Good at dishing out damage, just tanking for a little bit. See, I really wish I had more firepower now, instead of the ogres. Okay, just running out of ammo. Okay, these ones here, fairly badly damaged. This one here, it's doing alright, still getting some kills in there. This guy is in really bad shape, let's get him out. I might need to neck him. Don't want to lose our heroes. Pop down one of these just to buy a little bit of time for them to escape. I think I think I really need to send Luther Harkon to try to kill Marathi, but she's a very slippery bitch. Things are calming down a little bit. Since this guy's the safest, we'll put, give the extra ammo to them. This Hydra's just about gone. Come on, Luther, get back over here. What's going on? Why are you delayed so much? Find me a bit more time, though. Do you know the funny thing here? In the order resolve, it said that all the ogres would die, and we fought the battle, and guess what? All the og ogres died. So the order resolve was actually really quite uh, accurate here. But I think just because the ogres are news, I think maybe some people think that the ogres are really powerful, but they're like they're not bad, but they're not great either. Okay, 
Where did Marathi go? It's so slippery, can't bloody see her. There she is. She's almost used up all of her healing now. Alright, just about out of ammo. Do much. It's not a not a great weapon. Get me close. Move. Move it. Okay, anybody that's got ammo left, you need to be aiming for those dark shards. Okay, we should actually be able to push forward against them now. Because all that's left is just the missile units. These actually might be useful to uh, charge in there as well, because they'll be a bit faster than the regular zombies. And there's the army losses. Okay. Now, funniest thing about the situation, if we had order resolved it, we probably would have wiped out all of their forces. So this army here literally is better in order resolved than it is manually. Oh, did you just suck? Okay. So then we could, um... Once the battle's over, you can then get some healing done. Alright, but... The main thing that we want to look at here is the different damage values, right? Perfect victory, which is what order was said resolve was going to happen. And this is really where you get an idea of where different units have different values, right? Um, were the ogres instrumental in keeping the enemy away from the necrofexes? No. I mean, the necrofexes were literally in melee half the fight. So would it have been better to just have necrofexes instead of them just tanking? Probably. Look at the different kill values. So literally all of the ogres got killed. <laughs> this is what the order resolve said was going to happen. So... Uh, this one here, 20,000 damage, 6,000 damage. I mean, the, the Mornfang Cavalry were better than, than the Man Eaters, because they really got in there and got at the enemy artillery. But yeah, look at this, 6,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 11,000, 15,000, 11,000, 16, 15, 17, 20. And they survived. Which means every, also, because they're undead, any time that we cast anything, we're get, getting a little bit of health. It's not a lot, but it's better than nothing. But yeah, if we had, um, if we had auto-resolved this, I'm, I'll load up the uh, auto-save, actually. Kill them. Doesn't matter, it doesn't need to save far back. Just load the auto-save up, and just auto-resolve it, and see how it did. So yeah, it's only on hard difficulty. So really, when it comes, look, if you... I'm not trying to sit here and say that you should always build a Doomstack. But if you're going to build a Doomstack, you have to understand how the game works. And that the point of a Doomstack is to inflict the army loss penalty with as little damage done to you. Now the thing is, if you've got units that take ridiculous amounts of damage, like the Ogres, the Ogres probably hurt us more than helped because, because they got wiped out, we had to reach a higher threshold of damage done to the enemy before we could inflict the army losses. Alright, well... We wiped out the enemy forces, but... Even in order... Man, that's pretty generous. It's like twice as much damage than what we actually inflicted with that unit. That being said, I didn't use up all my ammo. But see, even in the order resolve here, these guys here, they just didn't perform very well, and they got wiped out. So... Um, actually, let's look at the save again. I want to see what the price difference is as well. Versus the um, Necrofex versus the um, Ogres. So just load it up again. Then I'm also not trying to sit here and say that you should never hire Ogres. Ogres are very useful in potency units. And they're very useful for um, factions that could use their speciality. Like the Dwarves. The Dwarves probably benefit the most from the Ogres. Since they don't reduce upkeep cost of their units by default generally. So, Ogres are pretty much price on point with the Dwarfs, and they are faster than any Dwarf unit. Okay, so we're just going to back off from here, and we'll have a look at the price differences. So, 91 gold. Oh, well, they are cheaper. I mean, marginally. Marginally cheaper, but still. Money's not really an issue, I guess, if your army only costs 2,000. Um, my advice would just, yeah, get more... Oh, you didn't... Are you kidding me? The one thing that you didn't build was this. <laughs> it's like the first thing you should build. Um, 
I guess he just built it from a city. Right. So, so yeah. When... The, the, the main point that I'm trying to make here is... The two main points. Play whoever you want. That's the first point. If you don't want to make Doomstacks, don't make Doomstacks. If you want to make thematic armies, make thematic armies. All the more power to you. You get into trouble, feel free to send it to me. If I can't fight it, I'll do my best, sort of thing. You know, as long as it's actually interesting. Um, but if you're trying to make a Doomstack, and I'm so trying to show you how it's not working as a Doomstack, saying, but I'm trying it to have it fun. Okay, well, that's fine. If you're going to have fun... Then say you're having fun. That's fine. However you want to play. I'm not here to judge, right? Um, but this is a, supposed to be a doomstack, and it's a, not a doomstack. All right? Just remove the ogres, get more necrofexes. The heroes are fine, apart from take them off this piece of shit mount. Take them off that. The um, the gunnery might... Okay, sorry, Gunnery White might be able to stay on it because we don't send it into melee. It just stays close to the Necrofexes. So that's kind of okay because it actually raises them up a little bit, allows them to shoot from a downward angle rather than an upward angle, which is better. So the Gunnery White is actually okay to stay on the Rotting Promethean because you don't use it for tanking. But these guys here that don't have a missile weapon and you're primarily using them as spellcasters, take them off the Rotting Prometheans because it's, it's a rubbish mount. But it's okay for, for that one, in my opinion. So, um, yeah. That's my thoughts on this. I hope that helps in, in if you do want to make Doomstacks. Um, and, you know, making your armies as effective as possible. And if you, you know, don't want to do that, have as much fun as possible. If this is if this is your idea of a fun time, all the more power to you, you know. And if you get into a disaster situation, feel free to send it to me. More than happy to deal with that kind of stuff. Not a problem at all. But, you know. Just, just be honest about what you're trying to do, and I'll help you with that. That's all I'm trying to say. Anyway, that's the end of this one. I hope that helps you guys. I hope you find that entertaining. Um, and I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.